Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm very thankful that, uh, and, and honored uh, to be here on behalf of all of us beatboxers up here. We are very honored uh, to come and share our craft with you, to talk about it, to uh, play with it, to exercise, and, and to explore our, our voices, and, uh, and hopefully, by the time we need to be empowered by those, by those voices while we're having a good time. All right. Um, so before uh, we really get started, we want to be able to warm up our voices a little bit and, and get to, to know each other. Um, and so we're, I'm going to lead us into a few really easy uh, warm-ups. My name is Chesney Snow. Um, and um, again, welcome. Uh, we're going to be rocking some beatbox today. So what I need for us to do is if possible, we're gonna, we're gonna stand and we're gonna create as much of a circle as we can with everyone holding each other's hands and we're gonna do a quick little uh, 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 vocal warm up. to all see each other. Push that back just a second. All right. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, what's called a cleansing breath. And I learned this, uh, this exercise actually from a friend of mine who uh, teaches over at, at ARC here, um, which is a really awesome theater school. So we're just going to hold the hand of, of each other, and we're going to take three uh, simple breaths. Right. But our first breath, we're going to try to let all the air that we possibly can out of our lungs. So we're going to let it all out, and then we're going to breathe back in together, okay? And we're going to do that on three, right? So we're going to let it all out. We're going to breathe all back in, and we're just going to relax. That'll be our first breath, and then we'll take two more, okay? So on three, one, two, three, let it all out. Ah. Very good. Make sure that you feel the hands of the person next to you. Take an eye contact and tell that person, I'm going to take care of you, you're going to take care of me. Yes. So we're taking, so we're taking care of each other today. We are going to explore our, our, our voices. We're going to take two more breaths. Just letting all the kinds of you know stresses of this weekend or this week, and we're gonna let that let that all out. Okay, two more breaths, and one, two, three, and let it out, and one more. Beautiful. Do one last little thing with our voice, all right? Uh, and this will be just to kind of let the stresses out, all right? Um, the breath is the focal, it's the core, it's what centers us, all right? We're gonna go uh, up at the top of our voice, like, ah, right? All the way to the bottom of our voice, uh, right? On a scale, we're gonna go, ah, and we're gonna let out all of the stress, right? And we're gonna hear it, and you wanna let your voice fill this room. Are we ready on three? We're gonna go up, all the way down, okay, ready? One, two, three. Ah! Yes, and let go of the hands next to you, and we're going to shake it out. All right, and we're going to do it again this time, except we're going to go from the lowest part of our voice all the way up to the highest point. Okay, so we're going to go. All right, ready? And on three, one, two, three. Beautiful. There's nothing better than the human voice. Okay, so let's sit back down. All right, that's our first little waking our voices up. So why are we here? We are here uh, for beatboxing. And what is beatboxing? For me, we're all going to get to discuss this. You have some of the most amazing beatboxers in the world here in front of you today. No lie. Um, and what we're going to be doing is having a conversation about beatboxing, practicing beatboxing, and then we're going to uh, teach you guys individually some beatboxing master tricks and trades. Uh, then we're going to have a little fun battle. A 
most teens. Right. Now, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out um, to a um, friend of mine, Alyssa Harris, uh, who uh, really kind of helped me when I was thinking about how did I want to present this workshop uh, when we explore beatboxing. Um, and I really wanted us to think of, start thinking about beatboxing as an evolution of language, as language, right? My friend Alyssa Harris is a linguist uh, doing her doctoral program over at Yale. I know you guys are, are lovely over at, uh, uh, with each other. Uh, <laughs> No competition there. But what we're going to do is we're going to explore uh, beatboxing sound. But I think, and I have never, we're all going to have uh, these ideas, but to me, sound equals vibration and our body resonance for me. Right? Right. So if I can. Do we have this mic? Yes. Okay. So uh, you, you can, you, we can vibrate our sound, right? And we can feel our sound. And so our second part here, what we're going to do is we're going to feel each other's vibration and sound, right? All right. So I'm going to give an example, right? This is a very classic beatboxing sound. Right. That vibration's here, in the throat, right? right? You can have vibrations on the top of your head, right? You have vibrations <laughs> all throughout your body. Oh yes, okay, so I'm sorry, we, we're, we're making an announcement, uh, I forgot, I just started going in. Um, we are, and so for those of you who saw American Beatboxer, we're continuing to uh, make things around this, and this is, and so we are videotaping uh, uh, this, so if, if you are not 18, um, please let us know. I think we talked to one person who isn't, and everything's good. Um, everyone else is over 18? Yes, beautiful, okay. And um, everybody's okay with Everyone's okay with being video taped here, and, and we're gonna just make some interesting sound. Thank you very much. Awesome. Right, so what, we, what I want you to do, okay, is we are going to start by feeling our own vibration and then feeling each other, right? Vibration. And we're gonna start by taking our two fingers, right, and we're going to place them on our nose, and, and we're just going to hum into that uh, together. So hum as loud mm. as you can, right? On three. One, two, three. Mm. Who did not feel their fingers vibrating? Beautiful. So to me, at, uh, at, you know, beatboxing becomes a very spiritual thing because it is about vibration. We are connected through vibration. Vibration is sound, right? Right? And so our vibration goes from here all the way to our ankles. Okay? You can actually hum and feel your bones vibrating in your ankles. But what we're going to do, the person next to you, you're gonna, we're going to do the same hum, but now I want you to feel the person's vibration next to you. So you can do it in the center of the back. You can do it on the neck. Is everybody comfortable with that? Nobody here has been Not traveling around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we're all good. Okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, yeah. So just uh, find uh, a partner sitting next to you, and we just want to either you can feel it in the back, or you can feel it on the side. We're going to hum into that to feel our partner's vibration. Ready? So grab your partner.
and just say your name. You know, we want to know who your names are. And then we're going to introduce uh, our panel of incredible uh, beatboxing co-facilitators who are going to be breaking up into groups with you, teaching you sounds, answering your questions, and divide and creating a routine uh, as a group, which we will then perform uh, at the end of class. Does that sound exciting? Yeah. Does it sound exciting? Wow. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. All right. So, uh, so let's start. Uh, in the back, and you can just say uh, your name and where you're from, and we'll go around. Okay, cool? My name is Alex, I'm from New York. Woo, I'm yeah. Charles, I work over in the music department. Woo, I'm Linda, I live in Brighton. Hubert. I'm Aaron, I'm from Seattle. Yeah. I'm David, I'm from uh, Bedford. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Lauren, I work at the Kennedy School. Yeah. I'm Haven, I'm a senior in Dunster House. Woo. I'm Austin, I'm from Hawaii. I'm Roland, I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm Frank, I'm from Georgia. I'm Kobe, I'm from Boston. Hi, I'm Sung Min from New Jersey. Okay. I'm Rich McEwen from uh, New York. Okay, um, let's, yeah, let's go around, we're gonna go around first and then we're gonna introduce uh, uh, the panel uh, of your co-facilitators. So we're gonna come here and go around, so let's cool. go. Uh, I'm Devin, I'm from Michigan. Devin, I'm Ajay from Florida. Lauren from Ohio. Oh, Aisha from St. Louis slash DC. I'm Sterling from Hawaii. I'm Lon, I'm from Maryland. I'm Krishna, I'm from India. I'm Hannah, I'm from Ohio. I'm Michelle, I'm from San Francisco. Right. Jeremy from Chicago. Chris from Sacramento. Adriana from Georgia. Awesome. Adrian from Pennsylvania. Louis, so I'm Howard from. Tomo from Tokyo. Okay. I'm Howard from Georgia. Manavaskar from the Bronx. Professor D from Toronto. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, and I'm and I'm Chesney, uh, and I'm from Brooklyn. Um, and let's go down our panel. Uh, they're going to uh, introduce themselves, and then we're going to have a little uh, presentation by our panel on uh, sales of beatbox. All right, are you ready? Uh, my name is Chris Lee, and I am from New York City. <laughs> I, I grew up in Queens. Kayla Malady from New York. Evan Beatbox from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Gene from California, but I live in Boston. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Johnny from Buffalo, but I'm based in Brooklyn. Kenny Urban from Connecticut. Awesome. All right. So um, as I said before, you have some of the most amazing beatboxers in front of you uh, in the United States. Uh, and uh, so they are going to grab a mic. We got five mics. We're going to pass it around. We're going to start a little beatbox uh, uh, side first. So let's grab a mic.
great. So let's uh, let's uh, let's do a little quick. Uh, we'll get, we'll go around. Uh, this, if you guys don't mind, we could use this mic. It's a really nice yeah, mic. Yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, and you'll get to hear each one of these beatboxers on their own for a moment. We'll uh, and and they'll talk a little bit about their craft and what they think. Ready? Sure. <laughs> uh, you want to talk? Or? Yeah. Well, just beatbox actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk much, but I, I do make the boom boom. All right. All right, so with that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
opportunity to uh, talk to you guys about their craft. Um, and then, directly after that, we'll, we'll do a little bit of Q&A with them. Uh, and then we're gonna split up into groups and you're gonna get some individualized time with uh, one of the master beatboxers. They're gonna teach you guys some, uh, some sounds and some techniques and then we're gonna come back and present those. Does that sound cool? Word. Yeah. Come on, Harvard, does it sound cool? Yeah. Yes, okay, love it. All right, so let's, uh, let's have a seat, guys. Yeah, we'll do, we'll go. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, Chris, uh, you are an American beatboxer. Uh, he is uh, one of the original, we have, we have members of the original cast of the film uh, here, uh, Chris and, and Heaven. Uh, so just introduce yourself and uh, talk to us a bit about your craft of beatboxing. What it means to you. Oh, man. Hi, everyone. Hey. Uh, my name is Chris Leeds, also formerly known as NYC Beatbox. That was my name before. Decided to get rid of it because I feel like just as an artist, calling myself as just a beatboxer. What? <laughs> I was like 19 in the film. It's the first time I was in front of a camera like, eh, I don't want to interview me. No, it's cool. Um, anyway, uh, beatboxing. What it is to me? <sighs> For me, beatboxing kind of saved my life. To be very honest. Um, I was a very, very shy and introverted kid. And I spent a lot of time on the internet playing StarCraft, Warcraft, World of Warcraft. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and I didn't have a lot of money to spend on like going out and buying like CDs and stuff. So I used LimeWire because I had to like download music. And I stumbled across like Kenny Muhammad and Rozelle and this track called The Four Elements, which is like DJ Scribble and Kenny Muhammad and Rozelle going back and forth. And which was what was really dope was that I didn't know who is the DJ and who is the beatboxer? And I was like, wow, this is really cool. So I started to do a lot of research, humanbeatbox.com, which is a fabulous resource if you want to learn how to beatbox, by the way. <clears throat> uh, I started watching tutorials, and I would just go into my bathroom really late at night and go <laughs> That's, that's kind of cool. That's what it sounded like when I started. Um, and then I would bring that to school, because like, I, got, I got obsessed. And then my friends, well, the few friends that I had be like, wow, you can do that? That's cool. Do it for me. And I go, wow, that's cool. Let me show, you. Let me show my other friends if you do. Uh, I want to hear it. And then eventually people started talking to me because I was really shy and introverted. So it kind of brought me out of my shell and um, it's kind of like taking me places that I didn't think I was going to go. And like, I love it. I really. And I believe if you take care of something you love, it's going to take care of you, and that's what it's doing for me now. So. Beautiful. Um, and Amit, tell us a bit about, uh, about yourself, uh, what the craft of beatboxing means to you. All right, so, uh, yeah, my name's Amit. Um, I came to this country when I was five, and uh, I'm originally from Bangladesh, close to India, so you know, like, what the culture is like in family, whatever. So I grew up, you know, my family was trying to raise me a certain way, but I always had a love for hip hop music. Like I was seven years old and I was in the library downloading like DMX <laughs> lyrics and I got kicked out because of that, you know? So yeah, it's crazy. And um, for me, it was always the instrumental backing, you know, the artist. Like I would listen to the artist, but my main, you know, concern was just the instrumental behind it. So I was always listening to a lot of instrumentals and I wanted to become a producer. I wanted to make my own music, but I didn't have like any equipment or whatever. So I'm in high school and, you know, I was always like doing beats with my mouth, but I never knew it was beatboxing. I was like, <laughs> I was doing that. And then I heard my friend, he was like, <laughs> and I was like, whoa, how are you doing that? Like, I thought it was playing from some music player or something. And, <laughs> So he was like, yo, this is nothing. I gotta show you some stuff online. And then he, we went on YouTube and he showed me this guy called Faith SFX. And like I heard professional beatboxing for the first time and I was like, I didn't know this was a real art. I didn't know people can actually produce music with their mouth, like this is a real art form. So from there, like I just ran with it, which just watched so many beatbox videos, watched tutorials, taught myself and for like how he said beatbox saved his life for me is kind of like the same thing. I was also like a shy kid. But then when I started beatboxing, that also gave me like kind of a confidence to speak and express myself 
in words as well, not only just my beatboxing. So it definitely opened up a lot of doors for me just in life in general. Beautiful. Thank you, man. Kayla, yes. uh, the, the uh, 2014 uh, American Vice Champion this it's year. Give it up to Kayla. That's a great Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I started probably when I was like 10 years old. And it's kind of like a bit where I was doing it in school and I was just like, bing, bing, bing. I was really hyper. Like I was allowed maybe this much soda and if anyone else gave me more, I'd be doing like cartwheels in my house. So um, I played a lot of different instruments and I always beatboxed, uh, but I kind of just learned, like someone came up to me and they're like, oh, you're beatboxing. And I was just like, okay, whatever, like, sure, whatever you say. And I think the beauty of like why, what it means to me, it's really like beatboxing to me is a complete connection of like body, mind, and soul together. You know, because I play a lot of instruments um, and beatboxing you can take anywhere. As soon as I feel something, I feel this. I have this feeling in me, it goes right to my mind and out my body. And the beautiful thing with beatboxing, it's like you don't need to have these things with you. If a kid doesn't, if a kid can't afford a trumpet, you can teach him how to play a trumpet with his mouth. And now you just expanded his opportunity or her opportunity, and they didn't even have to buy anything. Um, beatboxing is complete expression. I could do whatever I want. Uh, if you watch a lot of us do our hands move, because it's just something you guys will know today. As soon as you do it, your hands are just going to be like, what? I can't control myself. <laughs> um, it looks really silly, but it's so freeing. It's so freeing. It, it really is a beautiful thing because it also connects you to so many other people. Um, we have a lot of friends that are internationally, um, international and they come. And they, some of them, we don't speak the same languages. Like uh, Nino's from France came and he spent like a week at my house. And I don't know French and he doesn't know English. But we were still laughing with each other, and there was no, there was no misconnection really. I still know exactly how he is, even though we didn't really say one word to each other. All we did was beatbox. But because when we're like, you can express yourself so much, and you still are connecting, and it's limitless. I mean, I hear honestly every time I see these guys, they have a new sound where I'm like, what? I didn't even know that the human mind could do that. But it's kind of beautiful too, because especially in like this electronic age, where it's kind of becoming where like computers are more musicians than musicians, it's like taking it back. You know what I mean? We can all do You can shape things, you can create sounds and it's like, oh, you thought only a computer could do that? Oh, you think that a machine is better than a human? No, 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 no. We could do that. Those sounds are only invented because they came out of our minds. So it's a really empowering thing and it's really beautiful for self-expression. And I'm glad that you guys are all here to be a part of that. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. 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 And, uh, uh, Evan, uh, 2012 uh, vice champion. Um, speak to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was really great, uh, you know, doing it as a professional beatboxer, touring with Universal, uh, about to go on tour with Arrested Development. Um, you know, uh, really amazing stuff. Give it to us. Um, so, it, I, you know, this is um, this is like my first time that I'm really hearing the like in depth story of everybody here, and it's kind of cool because I think I can speak for a lot of us that we're like we're hearing a lot of links to each other. Like you know, um, I first it, it, beatboxing is is widely considered a hip hop element, but I actually got into it through alternative rock, and um, so it's like so from the start the very like first start like it was kind of I had like a bizarre perspective um <laughs> I have an older brother and he uh he's like 18 months older than me and it's just one of those situations like you both go to the same high school one of us has a car and the other one doesn't you know so <laughs> whatever he's playing in the car that's what I'm listening to but at the same time it was kind of cool because um it kind of forced me to listen to music outside of my um outside of what i typically listen to and in doing so like i he would play a lot of like alternative rock and they'd have like a lot of different type of like guitar basses and, and bass riffs and i used i remember my first encounter with beatboxing was like listening to a third eye blind song and like just trying to mimic like one of those just low guitar riffs and, and like everyone else said it previous like I don't, you know, you don't know that it's consciously that you're, it's beatboxing, you know? I, mean, I, I don't remember, like, I didn't know what it was. And 
I would just continue, continuously try to, to mimic music. And then later, you know, it, it kind of wasn't just about mimicking music as much as it became an outlet for, for self-expression. And like even Kayla was saying, it's, it's, it's like a language. It's like a language um, that crosses the boundaries of, of race, of ethnicity, of age. Of, you know, like it's like it, it's a it's a universal art form that links people together, and, and I think you know um, that's just one of the main things that that I love about it because I've met all these people through the art form, and you know I'm, I mean it's repetitive at this point, but it's just true. It, it's an art form that has literally structured my life in kind of my self identification as well as my profession, but only because when you do something that you love long enough. Um, you know, you're, you're bound to be successful in anything that you do that you love because you're going to work at it because you love it. So, I mean, that's, that's in, in a kind of short glimpse kind of my story. I, I didn't want to, like, repeat too much of the same stuff. But, um, yeah, beatboxing saved my life. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I think you'll see that as a recurring theme about the art form, uh, which we'll get into. But uh, Gene, amazing. Obviously, and uh, the hometown hero here must be uh, you're really doing it. So, talk to us. Uh, beatboxing saved my life. Actually, I didn't start really getting serious about beatboxing until like three years ago. Um, but I've always been a drummer all my life, and I attended Berkeley College of Music for a while, and. Um, I don't know, it was just, I, I got really depressed there because all the pressure and like, I had to spend so much time doing projects that I didn't want to do and all my creative juice went to that. And, um, and I thought to myself like, why do I need a degree? Why do I need a piece of paper that says that I can rock out? I can already do that. <laughs> so I, I dropped out, I dropped out of, <laughs> I dropped out of uh, Berkeley. And then there is the money issue, because, you know, I'm not going to school, so my parents won't pay for, you know, whatever, living costs. So I was like, how can I make money? <laughs> so I started street performing. Um, I started beatboxing a lot more and um, took it to the streets. And yeah, I've just been living off of that for about two years now. And uh, that's how I saved my life. Yeah. 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 It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Thank you, Jim. So my name is Johnny, I'm from Buffalo, and uh, I went to school. What, what did they call you? My, my beatbox name is Johnny Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, yeah. So I went to school with Chris, actually, we went to college together. I was going for guitar, and the last semester, he was going for clarinet and tenor sax, which is why he's, he's a phenomenal beatboxer, because he has so much breath. <laughs> so, he took me to a battle about a week after I moved in with him, and I hadn't seen beatboxing like when I was in middle school, Roz Ellen, DJ, uh, doing like the scratch battle and stuff, but I never really got into it. And then he took me to this battle in Toronto where um, there was a really well established beatboxing community there that had an amazing battle, but also one of the judges, Korean Effects from Toronto, was one of the kind of pioneers and innovators in like the new school generation of beatboxing. And like I saw, these guys doing like house music and electronic music and dubstep and that was my initial like, oh, people are doing electronic computer things? Like that's, that's crazy, it's impossible. It was just like so amazing. It made me realize like we're capable of so much. And just immediately then I was like, Chris, you gotta show me this, man. It's so cool. And I like picked his brain for like the rest of the semester and he showed me everything he knew. And it was awesome and just like, um, it's great for the connections that you can make because it's just like, <laughs> I'm liking it right now. <laughs> so I actually was fortunate enough. So I, that was basically how I started beatboxing, Chris taught me. And then like moved to New York pretty spontaneously and kind of just like developed my own sort of style. And then was fortunate enough to go to Europe and like hang out over there with some beatboxers. And it was just amazing. Kind of what Kayla was saying with French, they were German, I didn't speak German but we were having conversations, we were connecting, making music together, and 
I actually started to try and learn German, and like I think beatboxing made me very conscious of what goes on when you're speaking and when you're like trying to do different languages. Like German has a song where they go, that's ne I've never used in language before, and like I think beatboxing, everyone was like, oh, you have a really great German accent. Do you have you been doing it before? That was just teaching the numbers. I was like, no, um, hi, you know. <laughs> that's just it. it just I can maybe better replicate it, so I think it makes people more aware of speech things. And that's how beatboxing saved my life. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and we're going to actually get a little bit more in depth about some of the uh, practical applications of beatboxing. But before we do, last but not least. I'll be real quick. One of the, one of, one, one of, one of the, one of the world's best beatboxers. Beatboxing saved my life. <laughs> I'm kidding, it really didn't actually. I mean, those are great stories, but. Uh, <laughs> My life was going pretty well, but it definitely made it a, a lot better. Um, I mean, I, I always was musical, singing and all that when I was younger, making noises, kind of like the rest of these guys. But um, in high school, I started messing around. My friends would rap at parties, and I would just do a simple boots and cats, you know, beat. And um, I kept with it, and um, I was never really shy, but it definitely helped me um, connect with others, I'll, I'll agree with that, because I, I had my good, my friend group, and I was really friendly with them, but this is what, beatboxing is what allowed me to spread to, to everyone, and I beatboxed uh, throughout high school, and I eventually was, uh, I got known for it, I did it at the talent show, and then I won that, and then, by then I was friends with everyone, and it, and it definitely allowed, it opened doors for me, and uh, I don't know, I just realized I'm talking, like, uh, with the same microphone, <laughs> this is how I beatbox when I hold it, I have no idea why I'm talking like this, it's crazy. You see this? Because this helps me so I can hum. But I, I'm talking like this. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much. Beatbox didn't save my life, but it can save yours. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, again, um, my name is uh, Chesney Snow, uh, and I'm executive producer of the film American Beatboxer. Uh, and I would say beatboxing didn't save my life. I think it was definitely one of the main influences creatively that that did. Um, you know, I started beatboxing uh, when I was 12, um, and I founded the American Beatboxing Championships uh, after seeing that our community really needed to come together. And so, back in as if you if you got to see the film uh, back in 2010, I started the American Beatboxing Championships. By that time, I, beatboxing had really changed my life. You know, I went to New York to be an actor. I was uh, I was classically trained uh, as an actor, um, and I found out when I got to New York that so were a lot of other people. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, to have something that kind of uh, uh, separated me, I would use beatboxing with uh, my poetry, and that started to take me all around the world. So that was like 2005, right? And I got to like travel to Europe, got to travel to Asia um, as a beatboxer, and it really I would say that it was a, it was a huge part of uh, of my development as an artist. And uh, and I just had a few things, and then I want to open up to some questions and then break up into groups. Okay, cool. Everybody, how's everybody feeling? Good. Beautiful. Uh, so I want to discuss. Can everybody see this behind you? Should we open up a bit? Let's open up a bit, guys. Just to briefly talk, I have to spend too much time on the academic, but we are at Harvard. Oh, man. See that? Whoops. All right. It's a head resonance. All right. So, um, so what is the definition? What I wanted to talk about was beatboxing being um, uh, basically a, a language, an evolution of language. I'm gonna squeeze by here, guys, so I can get to my piece. And Miriam says that it is, um, uh, the definition is that it's an audible, articulate, meaningful sound as produced by the action of the vocal cords. Um, and that it is a systematic, obviously, means of communicating. You'll see, just like language is also sign language, right? So there's these ways of, um, of communicating. Oxford just put our word in their uh, official dictionary like two years ago. I've been seeing beatboxing raise itself uh, in, in status. Uh, this year, there was a degree program uh, that's focused on beatboxing 
at the Guildhall School of Music, uh, which, for those of you who may know, uh, it's one of the world's top conservatories uh, for music. There are approximately 630 sounds associated with the human language, right? It doesn't sound like a lot, right? We're gonna, what, what I think what we do is we take the phonetics of language and, uh, and we make it into a, a music, a musical expression. And music is definitely a form of language because we are using it to communicate uh, emotion, right? And what we are doing is that we are transforming the phonetics of language into musical expression, which is what we are about to do right now, okay? So I want us to count off, we have Seven, we're gonna break up into seven groups. All right? We're gonna find a space in the room, and you can, or should we do the Q&A now? Let's do the Q&A first. <laughs> I, forget, I almost forgot about that. So we're gonna run through a quick uh, Q&A where you get to ask these beatboxers uh, anything you would like, and I, you guys, you guys don't need a mic. Do you need a mic? Yes, we need a mic because we are recording, and let's pass this around. It is the white mic, there we go. Okay, so uh, any questions for our beatboxers, questions on the craft of beatboxing? Uh, let's go ladies first and then we'll come back. I actually have a million questions because I'm just learning about beatboxing, but um, one is um, how much of what you do is improv and, and how do you compose, I don't know, a, a beat or a song or, you know, um, is that a good question? Uh, yeah. let's, let's take it, uh, Kayla. Yeah, so um, actually usually all the time in a beatbox, it's pretty much made up, um, and it's freestyled. I think a lot of us do that, we just kind of jam. The thing is, it's like after you do like 500 times, it becomes something that's so muscle memory that you, you don't think about it anymore. You know, so your body or your mouth already knows and already has formed that so many times that without you thinking, you're just gonna go So then that kind of becomes a back burner. So now you're not thinking about the drum parts anymore because our drums have become pretty much set in muscle memory. So then your head can start thinking about melodies, you know what I mean? So then when you're kind of making stuff up, it's like after you uh, get melodies after a while, then that goes on the back burner. So then you can start thinking about sound effects. So then your palette just starts to rise. So then you're, even though you're still making up everything, you know, you've done it so many times that you get so comfortable doing these type of sounds that your, your brain and your mouth are gonna be so connected that whatever you're thinking is just gonna come out. You don't have to think about what you're actually doing. So you're not trying to be like, oh, how do I learn this sound? Like a, how do I learn that? Crap, so you have to practice that all the time. Once you get it down and it's solid, then when you hear like, do, 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 do in your head, instantaneously it's just. So it just, it becomes something where your, your mind is so connected with your body that you can just think these free things and then we'll just come and connect like that. And, and, and it's, it is, in, in, that, in that sense, very similar to language because language we do on a subconscious level, right? We're not like thinking, we're, you know, what we're doing is just it happens, like raising our hand, right? And beatboxing is very, is very much exactly like that language that you described. Chris, you wanna take this and then yeah. we'll... Uh, just to piggyback off of that, we use freestyling as just a means to develop a lot of our structured routine. So exactly like Kayla was saying, we're going, when you're going... <laughs> Once you get comfortable with that, sorry, I see the hands and the moving. But once you get comfortable with adding that bass melody, that's kind of like something you've added to your vocabulary. You know, much like when you're in elementary school and you're like, cat, dog, gesticulate. Wow, I learned all these new words. That's what you learn in elementary school. It's cool. But in Chris's class. <laughs> but Chris is a school teacher. He's a, he teaches elementary school. I do teach elementary school music. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, just, just a lot of the time it, it, we use freestyling as a medium to develop structure and then once you have all of these mediums of vocabulary, you can just insert them just kind of like a puzzle any way you want, just as long as you have. It comes down, it comes up, you can develop it with any kind of contour. So Great. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, let's, uh, let's pass the mic uh, this way 
And, uh, and most of us are educators. Most of us work with young people. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll go on, and then we'll come over to you. Uh, the question I wanted to quickly ask was, um, what's the process by which you guys like, seek out or develop new sounds? Um, I could start and then go forth. Uh, I know for, for um, I had to do a play uh, where I was just, the idea was that you just make sound effects. And, uh, and, I, and I learned something similar to what uh, we had Michael Winslow with us this year. And so uh, he does something, uh, something similar in that you just, what I do is I just listen. I think that's the, the key thing for me. You can listen to everything that are around you, uh, that's around you. Uh, Michael Winslow, he, he, had, he had said something really interesting. We talked about uh, Grand Central Station. The first thing he said is, oh yes, there's great sounds there. There's great sounds, you know? Um, because that's what we do. It's like to prepare for, for my play, where I play this subway musician, I would go to the subway and I would just listen for hours. I would listen to exactly how the train sounded, how it stopped, what the bells were like, how people chattered. How can you, how can you imitate people chattering in a crowd when you're just one person, as a crowd as one person. And so that's one of the things that I personally do. Uh, and, uh, I'm just gonna take up from where you left off and say, uh, so so it's like you're you're creating a bank of sounds based off of whatever inspires you. Some, for some of us, you know, for me it's like a daily thing. Sometimes it's like, okay, well, what kind of mood am I in? You know, like if, if I'm listening to a certain kind of song of that day and I, and I just like the feel good of the song, you know, um, there could be sounds in that or the song itself that inspires the sound. And so you know, that just goes off of what Chesney is saying, you know, you take sounds from life applications or life experiences that can develop a bank of sounds. And now coming to the actual technical aspect of developing a sound is a little bit different. Um, there, um, there are tutorials that are widely used online that actually will teach you positioning of how to make, that can get you started in a sense um, on, and when you, on how to position the mouth to make a specific sound, and in doing tutorials online, you'll, you'll start realizing that, that uh, um, as you build upon more sounds, it connects to previous sounds that you use. An example of this is like, you know, one of the first sounds I think a lot of us learned is like a bass kick, you know? But, you know, um, you, once you learn that sound, you can connect and build upon it by putting like, um, an electric uh, hit behind it, but you would need to learn the bass kick before you can do like the electric kick. You can't go like your <laughs> before <laughs> and, and so a lot of sounds are like that where it's a multi-step process. So it's like you, you learn the, the, the foundations of your basic sounds first layered by, you know, clapping and Mixing sounds together to create more advanced sounds later. I think Great. Like experiment and have fun. Be silly. I have the mic with you, just because so, we're recording. Yeah, it's really simple. Like to just like experiment, have fun, be silly. All of us just make really stupid sounds all the time, and it's really silly. And sometimes my friends hate it, but just like mess around, have fun. That's like the most. That's the part about beatboxing that's the best. You just be silly. Um, I just I maybe want to take a, a, a few more, but we want to get to the beatboxing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to get you guys actually. Uh, 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 beatboxing. So if um, if there are, because we're you know we we have limited time. So but let's t let's take a few short uh, comments uh, uh, to to kind of speak to that, and then we will. Put to piggyback off all that, also um, in the past like two or three years, four or five or so, YouTube has been a huge part of like the growth of the beatboxing community because someone can come up with a crazy sound anywhere around the world, and they'll post it online. That's, that's crazy. So like starting off for me personally, that was a huge inspiration, but then it grew to where I started hanging out with all of these awesome, amazing beatboxers and just like the community family vibe, everyone just shows everyone what they know and you learn from that. So taking it from other beatboxers, online or in person, and then just music, just listening to songs, DJs, whatever you like, and kind of, oh, that sounds like something I can maybe do, and you just make weird noises all day until it sounds like it. Okay, uh, let's take another question. All right, um, I'll save anything remotely super academic for afterwards. Just want to say this is the dopest experience I've had so far in my graduate school <laughs> academic year. Thank you. Give it so, which is graduate. First and foremost, y'all are insanely sicker than all 
viruses on the planet. Um, <laughs> open oh, more infection. Let's get it. Um, but just really quickly. Ain't got nothing on y'all. Really quickly. Um, I'm just really curious. What are the coolest collaborations you all have done or hope to do? Okay. Let's uh, go down and try to uh, uh, get, get that. I mean, I, I could say what mine was. Uh, uh, recently, I got to collaborate with Zap Mama. Um, and uh, for any of you that don't know, she's like a pioneering female beatboxer who is like a world music superstar. And, uh, and she does incredible things with her voice, with polyrhythms and melodies. And, and, uh, and so she said something very important to me about the process of, of creating. And it was that what uh, music and what we do is made to heal. It's, it, it like, and so she crafts her songs and crafts her, her, her sonic sound to heal other people. And that's what I try to do with, with beatboxing. Um, I, I've, I've worked in education for a while. Uh, we work on a program, if you've seen the film, uh, beat, uh, beat Rockers at the Lavelle School for the Blind, where we use beatboxing as a form of uh, music therapy. Uh, Kayla is now uh, uh, we're heading that program up. Um, and, uh, and so we want to expand beatboxing uh, and put it, bring home to educational environments like at academic institutions like this. Let's go around. Um, the coolest collaboration was um, with a hip hop dancer. And um, we, we both auditioned for So You Think You Dance season 10. And we got in. All right. I mean, he didn't get in, but we got on TV, <laughs> which was amazing. <laughs> so yeah, that's. Me, uh, Chris and I are part of this organization, organization in New York called the Hip Hop Reeducation Project, and we got to perform at the Trinity Hip Hop Festival in Hartford, Connecticut, no, no. last summer. And um, Talib Kweli was the headliner. We got to go second in the entire bill, but then turns out his DJ wasn't ready, and so like next thing I knew, I heard Chris on stage like killing time, and like ran to the front of the stage like, what's going on? So, Get up here! We grabbed our other friend Dizzy and did like a five minute like rocking Talibali's crowd while he was getting ready. And that was <laughs> the best so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've done some pretty cool collaborations, but... Um, what was I going to do? Oh. And, um, I, I mean, I worked with some rappers from Connecticut. Um, I was just in a Snickers commercial in Russia, which was cool. But, um, <laughs> Names like Afro Man and stuff like that. I mean, we've done some fun things that I think we're going to do much more of really soon. But I think the best time I have collaborating is with my my fellow homie beatboxers because when we put our freestyle ideas together, like what we were showing you, none of that's playing. We just feel off each other, and when we do shows together, we just like we did one the other night, and we, we just always kill it together because we uh, we share the same passion, and I think that's my favorite collaboration. Awesome. In other words, he doesn't need a famous collab because his life is already broken. Yes. <laughs> Have a favorite um, collab. My favorite collab was actually recent. Um, there's this amazing violinist. His name is D Sharp. And um, he's pretty much like, you just combine EDM, rock and roll, and just put it on a violin. And like with sparks flying out and just jamming, that's what he does. He goes around Europe and does it. Um, and. Uh, just pretty much, um, just yeah, rocking out, beatboxing, violin, kind of mixed at the same time. And uh, also recently, uh, he's from New York, the Tap Factor, um, the Tap Dancer. Um, we just did a TEDx together, and uh, just it's like a beatbox, tap dance kind of intermingle thing. So that was really cool. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah. I did a lot of fun things. Uh, I like to, uh, I do a lot of mixing with like dancers or like a lot of theater work. I like to incorporate my beatboxing. But I think my favorite thing that I do is I do this show with a band. It's got like horn, DJ, you know, bass and everything. So I'll do like singing and I'll rap and I'll beatbox a little bit. But then at one point in the night, it always ends up me battling every single instrument. And for me, that's just like really fun because it, I have to do like scratching battle and then like horn and then like bass and then go back and forth. And for me, it's just really fun because I get to like, do you, you know, do a little bit of everything, so it's fun to kind of experiment with all that. Cool. Nice. Um, 
like what Kenny was saying, my favorite thing is to collab with other beatboxers, especially this guy right here. Brown, brown. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, actually, I started teaching. I started giving a beatbox lesson to this kid named Lionel Yu, and he's also like a really Very great pianist. And um, I did collaboration NYC with him a little while back. And for me, like working with the pianist was like really big because how he plays, like the way he plays, he puts a lot of emotion in it. And me and him like link in our energies like really well. So every time we play and I'm beatboxing, like it brings out a lot more emotion in me from him playing the piano. And like, I just love collaborating with like piano players. It's just like, it's amazing. All right, so uh, it's so hard to even pick one. Because they're just different. There's, I don't think there's such thing as best. They're just different because you pull something great from each of those experiences. Uh, but one of the most memorable experiences for me was uh, I work with this dude by the name of Brian Bain, who's actually who went to Harvard Law. He teaches at NYU. Does a, he's an adjunct professor? Yeah, he's an adjunct at uh, NYU right now, which is really cool. We did a TED talk at Ironwood Prison in California. Um, it was put on by the Ford Foundation, and basically the premise of the entire TED Talk was to raise about like $50 million to go towards education, rehabilitation, and mental health in the prison system mm -hmm. in California. So it just, it's kind of cool, like, yeah, beatboxing. Oh, wait, I can use that for, like, social change. That's cool. And, like, it was cool because pe the people that were talking, like, Sir Richard Branson, Virgin Atlantic, um, and all, like, it was just 10 hours of, it was a, an emotional roller coaster and I learned so much just about so many things uh, that we can do to change just our situation and the situation at large, so. Great, uh, and you, you said that that was uh, developed here, right? Lyrics of Lockdown. Yeah, Lyrics of Lockdown. Yeah, it was performed here at Harvard. Uh, one more question and then we, we are, uh, peace. Yeah, what I just find really interesting about your response, I'm kind of building off the last question. As an MC and as a hip hop professor, I thought you all went around, you all said really interesting uh, collaborative projects you're working on. The glaring thing to me, given the actual uh, origins of beatboxing, as starting with rappers and beatboxers together, is that none of y'all mentioned collaborations with MCs, even though I know, I know you all have uh, major uh, yeah, well, I don't know you do this on a regular basis. Yeah. So, but, so my question is not now, tell me about the MCs you work with. Right. Um, but, and, and you don't all need to answer this. But I think it's an interesting question. So my question is really, uh, what is your relationship with MCs? And going back to something we were talking about the other day, um, I'm interested in also the tensions. Obviously there's collaborations, obviously some of y'all are rappers. Uh, you, of course, work with MCs. But I'm interested in also why you know, uh, working with MCs didn't come up. Why is that not your major thing that you're interested in? Uh, the school. You you and then, well, well, well I, I can take a little bit. I can take half of it. Okay, so we'll, 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 we'll respond. We'll respond. <laughs> okay, so um, I mean, I think that there was a, a, a moment where the beatbox was really kind of seen as a subset of MC, right? Where, where, where beatboxing really was not front and center in hip hop. It was really just supporting uh, the, the MC, and it was a very simple, right? And that's how we think of like Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick and Buffy and the Fat Boys. And um, there was a period of time in hip hop where the, the MC basically became the dominant uh, figure of hip hop, and all of the other elements were kind of uh, put to the wayside, and beatbox was put way down there. Okay, like and and so and so it was really kind of seen as something that was a bit you know played out, but it didn't die. Um, it, it was a huge underground scene that kept uh, that kept it alive, you know, with with legendary people that you know we don't we don't know or speak of today, like Eminem and uh, DOA and um, just tons of like uh, old school uh, beatboxers. And but now over the past say ten. Uh, I would say 10 plus years, uh, beatboxing stands on its own. Like in this, it's that whole idea of you're a one mouth band, right? You are, you can do it, uh, you, can, you can do it 
you can do it all. Uh, but I, I, I don't think you, you can continue uh, just to build on. Yeah, it could do. Yeah. I mean, so I think I just want to go back to what Chris was saying for a second. Like, yeah, it's you know, it's definitely not about um, what's best or what's not best. I have so many friends, the MC, that are really good MCs that love, you know, um, I thought the question more or less came about, like for me, was that uh, the actual art form expands past just hip hop. And so when, when, when um, the question came about, you know, what was, I kind of saw it as like an interesting, an interesting kind of experience. So being that it was like interesting, you know, um, or what was our most unique experiences, you know, I think I, a lot of us, um, it seems like a very common thing. I mean, I think a lot of people think like that the, the MC beatbox is it's actually very common, even yeah. now, and it's very prominent. I mean, I know personally, I'm, I'm not gonna speak for them, but I think that they would agree with me. Probably every single I go, every time I've gone out and perform, an MC has either jumped up on stage. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's not that it's not fun. I think that I, there's fewer unique encounters sure. um, outside, of, outside of just hip hop, and that's why those stood out more than the others. That's okay. Are you good? Did you do you have yeah, really you can make like 30 seconds because that will be what we want to beatbox. Yeah. So I just think it's important to look look at beatboxing and MCing in a social context because beatboxing well, was used for the MC because when you were in a cipher, you didn't have a DJ to be like, oh, drop a beat, or you didn't have a radio, so right. someone just be like, <laughs> and like, bam, 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 bam. Right? I can't rap really well, but anyway, but um, <laughs> and like. You fast forward 15, 20 years, now you have you know, the dawn of the internet, all this information is readily available, and then you see people on, on the YouTubes being like, <laughs> and you're like, wow, that's crazy! I wanna try and do that. And that, with electronic as well, uh, electronic music as well, now it's just like, wow, all these different sounds and stuff. So, I know we're running out of time, but yeah. social content, we'll talk more about it after. Okay, time, right? so our last, uh, our last, our, our last uh, half hour or so, is gonna be spent uh, with you, working individually with these guys, learning beatboxing sounds, and uh, and then you guys are gonna compose in peace. So I'm gonna count you guys off, okay? So you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. We think we're good? Everybody? Three. Okay. Okay, are we ready? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Beatboxers. Uh, you're going to go to a space in the room, okay? Follow your beatboxer to that space, and they're going to commence to teaching you the sounds of beatbox. I will come around with the microphone. Enjoy. Thank you. 